Hey everybody, Brett Tadlock, TN Artist here. This is Dog Day at the Beach. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, make sure to subscribe and, you know, give a thumbs up. If you want to see the full walkthrough of this, uh, you can do so over at Patreon, which uh, the information is below. And if there's any of the uh, brushes or anything that you want, want to know about, you can do that over on Gumroad. So like I said, the full painting walkthrough of this is over on Patreon. So you can go step by step. There's hours of content there. But essentially what I did was I sketched out the design of the painting. Uh, knowing that my center of interest was going to be the dog and the lady right there. So I worked on that and get it laid out so that all the elements point to that. Next, I went in and just started laying down some quick color to get an idea of where everything would be and just underpaint it. And if you've never painted with me before, that's one of the things I do a lot and I highly recommend is underpaint. Build your painting up in layers and really work on building those layers so that you can get the different uh, effects that you want. It's a great way to do it. So that's what I did here was just taking it and painting the, the uh, effects that I wanted and then from there start building on everything including this pier and the sky and the background and all that and kind of you know getting it laid out. But again, the whole thing is, is underpainting for the longest time and just building up those layers. So no one to do that. And then loosely putting in the rocks and getting an idea of how those are going to look in the background and all of that. Now, parts of this, I did look at a uh, painting, not a painting, I'm sorry, a, a photo that somebody had shared with me on Facebook. Uh, Kareem... Uh, had shared it with me and his painting had a lot of different stuff in it but I keep saying painting his photograph had a lot of different stuff in it and you know got permission to paint this that's the group we're in is where people give uh, photos for you to be able to paint so I took the photo and said, okay, some of the stuff I like, some of it I don't, some of it I want to change, some of the elements I want to keep. And that's kind of what I did here. You know, even if you have a photograph that you're working from, you're not tied to that photo. You know, you can move stuff around, you can change it, you can tweak it, you can adjust it. Make sure if you do use any photos that you have permission to do so, that you're either using a, an open source or uh, copyright free public domain image or that you're using one that somebody has said yes this can be used for making paintings and making artworks from and so that's what i was doing here and but the main thing with that is, is just make sure that you know you're not tying yourself to it uh to that photo because there's aspects of it that you may like there's aspects of it you may not and you have full artistic license to change that around as much as you want and that's what i did here was i went in and i adjusted things that i liked and got rid of things i didn't like and tried to really push and pull on the way it looked for what i wanted to do uh, the brush that I'm primarily using in this for the painting is the Everlasting Oil Brush, which is a standard brush that comes with Art Rage 6. If you don't have Art Rage, there is a trial version of it, link in the description down below, that you can do. Uh, it's a fully functional version. It just doesn't allow you to save or print, but you can use every tool in it. It's one of the things I like about Art Rage is the way they do that. But it's a very inexpensive program, so and it's really intuitive to use. But anyway, so just messing around with this, starting to build the layers up, play around with the color, play around with the lighting, knowing that I want to push lighting here and there to really kind of draw in the subject and the focus on my subject in you know, terms of the comp composition. So it's just a matter of playing around and, and getting the different layers that you like and building it up. I do use some stencils in this. I do use some uh, custom brushes towards the end and to get the effects that I want. So like I said, if you want to take a look at those, those are over on Gumroad. Some of them are free. Some of them uh, you know, do have a cost, but they have lifetime updates. So, you know, it's worth it. Anyway, but yeah, if you have questions about this, like how I use the stencils, how I uh, change it around, my thought process, again, you can leave a comment or a question below, or you can jump over to Patreon where I'm literally walking you through this entire painting as I do it. So would love to have you join over there. It's a good little uh, community that's starting up. And there's, like I said, there's hours upon hours of training there. So 
But anyway, uh, just enjoy watching this. Put any questions or comments below. It was a fun piece to paint and had some challenges and some things in it that you know made me think twice about how I was doing stuff and all that. But you know, it's really worth doing it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this. I'll check back in with you here in just a little bit. So when I got to this point right here, I had to decide how much detail was I going to put on the people and the dog. I paint very impressionistic, so I'm just trying to capture the idea of what's going on and capture the light and, and so forth. So I'm not trying to paint photorealistic at all. I can do portraits, I can do you know figures and all that kind of stuff, but I really wanted to just kind of get the essence of this person with their dog, uh, the person that's going to be out in the water and all that. So wasn't trying to spend a huge amount of time on it, but I did want it to look correct, you know, and so doing on that. And then I had to, <laughs> had to do some real work on the dog because the dog was looking like a giant cat there for a little bit. But <laughs> anyway, um, so the main thing with that is, again, figure out how much details you want to do. Are you painting more impressionistic? Are you painting more realistic? Which one is it that you're wanting to do? And, and try to uh, get that set in there and figure it out because that really is going to set the tone. I did look at several impressionistic uh, beach scenes of different people that had done stuff to try and get an idea, you know, how much really sort of details did people put into it, you know, that were doing beach scenes and looking at the classical uh, impression, uh, you know, impressionistic painters and trying to say, okay, uh, you know, are they putting a lot? And really they didn't. It was a lot of just, Again, the, the rough figure, the shape, uh, the proportions were accurate and trying to get that figured out. So really more focus on the lighting. And that's what I tried to do here. If you notice with the lighting from the lights and the shadows was doing that and playing around. Now, one of the things you've probably seen with the stencils I have is that I stretch them, I twist them, I turn them to use them to save time. That's the whole point of a stencil is just to be able to save time and not be tied to it. And one of the great things about art rage is that you can stretch the stencils and really change them and twist them and so that's what i did with this this stencil that i'm using right there you can't really tell it but that's actually trees and so i just twisted it and, and stretched it the same for the foam that i did the waters and the pebbles just really trying to get those layers of textures built in and then i used a custom brush one that's called old brush to start streaking in some of those grasses and seaweed and the like to get that sorted out. So, and then just go back and erase or paint over with the chalk brush to smear it and smudge it into the background so that everything looks like it's seeding uh, into the picture itself and getting that contrast. But, you know, really the key to it is, is just paying attention to what you're doing with it uh, as far as what's going on around it. The original picture had like these just generic tree leaves. Uh, so I was playing around with those and used uh, Art Rage's tree 
leaf brush that it has, which is okay. And I played around with that and then decided, well, you know, I'm going to just make, I like the idea more of palm fronds. And I thought that gives it a much nicer feel to me. So that's what I decided to do. Again, artistic license, change it around. If you don't like something, it's your world, man. <laughs> do whatever you want with it. But I really liked how the palm fronds kind of directed you into it. And the same thing with the grass up front. It really kind of gave it more of a, you're coming into the scene of what's going on with it. So that's what I did with this. And then went back to add in the different amounts of foam and highlights to the waves as they're coming in. Because this isn't a real rough ocean. It's just kind of a soft, you know, waving ocean so went back in with that the chalk brush the pencil and added in some highlights and some details and some reflections and doing all that so it's again just a matter of building up layers looking for contrast stepping back from it saying okay zoom out zoom in take a look at what you're doing and see if you like it or see if there's something else that you can fix or so forth and that's what i was doing here so don't be afraid to play around with it definitely check out art rage if you don't have it it's again it's an affordable program uh, you know, I like it. I think they do a good job with it and it's a very intuitive program to paint with. So again, thanks for stopping by the channel. I hope you got something out of this, just watching over my shoulder as I'm doing this and some of the thought process. There's tons of instructional stuff. Like I said, over at Patreon, feel free to join me over there and uh, take a look at all the stuff that's going on with it. But again, I want to thank you for stopping by. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you got a lot out of it. And if, again, if you have questions or comments or concerns or anything else, just let me know. One important thing I was doing right here to point out before I let you go, I had to add some contrast behind the dog. He was starting to, to blend into the beach too much when you zoom out. So that's what I'm doing here is kind of tightening him up a little bit, adding in some some different shadows, highlights, and contrast around him. Because remember, the only way for light to show is to have dark next to it. So again, thanks for watching. Leave any comments or questions below. Make sure to join me on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and all those fun places.